Hey, welcome back this morning. We are studying the book of 1 Samuel. Now we're moving into chapter 4, and we're going to hear some things in 4 and 5, especially about the ark of God. But let's see what happens with the ark here. Chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. Now Israel went out to battle against the Philistines and encamped beside Ebenezer, and the Philistines encamped in Aphek. And then the Philistines put themselves in battle array against Israel, and when they joined battle, Israel was defeated by the Philistines, who killed about 4,000 men of the army in the field. And when the people had come into the camp, the elders of Israel said, Why has the Lord defeated us today before the Philistines? Let us bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord from Shiloh to us, that when it comes among us, it may save us from the hand of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from there the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Hosts, who dwells between the cherubim. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. So there's some mixed things going on here. They go to battle, and they're defeated. God's people are defeated. It's a severe defeat, thousands of dead. And then they ask the right question. Boy, they're going to get one thing really right and one thing really wrong. They, why were they defeated? Why did the Lord defeat us? If the Lord isn't in it, if it's just humanity, maybe they would have won. If it was just their power against the might of the Philistines, maybe they would have won. But there was something going on, and they, they realized there's something wrong here. And it wasn't the Philistines that defeated them. The Lord defeated them. They were wrong. The Lord defeated them. They were needing to be right with God, and then he would have been with them. He wasn't there to protect and give them victory. They recognize that. Good on them. They're right on right there. Unfortunately, that's not the whole story here, because now some brilliant person in the crowd speaks up. It's one of the elders, apparently, he speaks up, and he says, you know, why don't we do this? Let's take, next time we go into battle, we'll go back. We're going to fight some more, but next time we'll bring the Ark of the Covenant, and then we'll win for sure. <laughs> I mean, unless God tells you to bring the ark into battle, I'd say it's presumption. Leave it in a proper, holy place. Do not bring it along like a rabbit's foot into the battle. That's not the way it works. It's not a magic relic. It's not, uh, this isn't the way God works. In fact, by bringing the ark into the battle so that they would perhaps think in the future, yeah, we just need to bring these, this uh, magic gear that God has given us into the battle. We'll win every time. They almost guaranteed themselves a defeat. God's not going to bless them when they're acting out presumptuously. So now they bring the ark. They bring it all up there. And guess who comes with the ark? Oh, no. Not only have they made this uh, unfortunate uh, plan, but there's Hophni and Phinehas, you know, two very steeply immoral priests, and they're going to carry it into battle. So I guess for Hophni and Phinehas, this was a big day. You know, they get to be... Uh, big men up there for Israel. They're carrying the ark. They're right in the front of everything. Hey, hey, you know, we're the stuff. Well, tomorrow's coming. They're going to fight the Philistines and carry the ark. Well, I'm not sure it's going to work out so smoothly, but let's see what happens next time. Why don't we pray about this for right now? Dear Father in heaven, sometimes we act presumptuously, and that's a lesson certainly we're going to see tomorrow morning. That's certainly a lesson here. Uh, bringing the ark when you have not commanded it. That's not your plan for us. So, Lord, when people come up with brilliant ideas, help us to check them and, and really be careful to make sure we're on your team. Help us to not just say, wonderful idea, let's grab it and go. That's not the right thing. Lord, we, we want to be right and ask that question like the elders did at first. Why has the Lord defeated us? Why is our church not prospering the way that it should? Is there an issue in us, a spiritual issue, a faithfulness issue a faithlessness issue in your people? Is there a sin issue that's unaddressed? Help us, Lord, by kindly and gently leading us, opening our eyes so that we can see and have an opportunity to step up in your direction. Please be our leader, our guide, and help us to learn. We're still little children, Lord. Help us to learn how to grow and how to be faithful, just one step at a time. Please help your people, Lord. Guard us from presumption, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So there's a message for us, an application for us today. Let's be careful where we're stepping and what we're stepping because we need to make sure that it matches God's real plan for us in the Word of God. We need to act in true faith, not in presumption. God be with you today.